that you was in an accident with, you know, it was, I saw that truck and she replayed the camera. So I'm like, yeah, that's the guy. So my daughter's school is like directly around the corner. So I'm picking her up, like I have this on video. I'm actually recording a person following me. So I'm like, my daughter's in a, in a car and he followed me a long, long way. So what I did was I had, I contacted him and son. I'm like, can you please meet me? I'm like, I really need to meet you. I'm like, I'm not trying to get in any type of trouble or nothing. I'm like, you know, I'm like, I've never given you problem. Like this is like, this guy is following me. I'm like, and like, I'm in tears. Like literally, I'm like, I'm, I'm not trying to get in trouble. She like, well, all right, well, just, well, just meet me here. So I met her like further up the street from the house. Like we met in an open lot. And she was like, I explained to her, I showed her, I'm like, look, here's my phone. I'm like, I can get my sister to send the other thing to you, but this is the man right here following me. She like, well, oh my God. She like, um, what you need to do is is call the police and make a report. So she like, well, you still at um at Felicia's? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you know, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what this guy, you know, what's this, what he's trying to do. So she's like, we are about to watch a parole revocation hearing out of the state of Louisiana. And when we're done, we're going to zap to my second channel, which more than half of you aren't subscribed to. We're going to watch a disturbing commutation hearing. I'll put the link to that in the description. Um, but if you're watching this live and it premieres, stick around and you'll get zapped there automatically. With that, let's jump in. Okay. okay. I think you got it. You got it. Okay, great. Hold on one second, please, for Mr. Rao. Hold on, please. There you go, sir. Mr. Rao, good morning. Good morning. Do you uh, introduce yourself? Tell us your name and DSC number. Um, James Rao, 363824. All right. And you have counsel with you this morning. We'd like to counsel. Will you introduce yourself? Good morning. My name is Anna Friedberg, and I have the honor of representing Mr. Rowell today. Okay, thank you. So, um, Mr. Rowell, the way this is going to work, I'll read the allegations against you. After each allegation, you'll enter a plea of guilty or not guilty. Then Mrs. Ledoux will be asking, she'll take the lead on asking you some questions. Uh, if there are no other follow-up questions, we'll ask you if there's a statement you'd like to make before we turn it over to Ms. Friedberg for her presentation. Yes, ma'am. I do say we have a couple of speakers. Do y'all have the list? Uh, at the appropriate time, we'll uh, allow those who've indicated they'd like to speak to do so. You can see them on the screen. I don't have their names yet, but it's coming. So you are accused of violating the conditions of your parole, specifically condition number four. And it says you fail to refrain from engaging in criminal activity as illustrated by your arrest by probation and parole on August 8, 2022, and you were charged with possession of a firearm or weapon by a felon, illegal carrying of a weapon with a controlled dangerous substance, possession with intent to distribute marijuana, possession with intent to distribute suboxone, mm -hmm. possession with intent to distribute MDMA. On December 12, 2023, uh, a jury found all charges to be not guilty. How do you plead to violating condition number four? Not guilty. Okay. Then we have condition number five, uh, which states you fail to refrain from not having in your possession or control any firearms or dangerous weapons as illustrated by your arrest by probation and parole on August 8, 2022, in charge with possession of a firearm or weapon by a felon and illegal carrying of a weapon with a controlled dangerous substance. How do you plead to violating condition number five? Not guilty. And lastly, there is condition number 10, and it states you failed to keep your supervision fees with the state of Louisiana current, and you're currently in arrears $2,205. How do you plead to violating number 10? Not guilty. Okay. Would you answer Mrs. Ledoux's questions, please? Good morning, Mr. Rowell. I don't know if it's morning or not. It's anything like that. No, it's afternoon. Um, Good afternoon. So um, you were on, um, you were paroled in 2018, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. What was the ad address that you supplied to your PDF uh, parole officer when you were on the street? Um, it was Crowder. I don't remember the exact. It was and on they, Crowder. 
and then you changed it. I saw on the notes where you changed that address. And what address did you change it? I had changed it to 45, and I made a change after that as well. Did you report that to your probation officer? Yes, ma'am. I had did it on two separate occasions. She told me that the, the office was flooded and she wasn't able to do it at that particular time. That was the first time I had tried to switch the address. The second time was I had contacted her. We met at a, a location that she had, had said, and I was being stalked by somebody and I made a police report. So she was like, well, just call the police. And she made me download Google Do. Um, my lawyer should have the police report that she told me to make. And like, I feared for my life. Like I was in tears telling her that I, I didn't want to be nowhere around that area because I have to pick my daughter right around the corner from there. Like I have the actual video of being followed and everything. Like all that's in the police report. The police have all that. Okay, so when you talk about she, the parole officer- That's what, Mrs. Son. And son? Yes. She, she had gotten my case. I was on parole with a Mr. Garrett. Right. And she took took his case loads over. But I had explained this to her, it's, it's in the record and like the video, the police report, everything. Okay, so I have no record of you changing your address and the um the dialogue that we got from yeah. the probation officer, which causes a problem in the situation because. When she told you, if you're telling me correctly, she said, meet me at your home, and you went to Wilson Street. Is that correct? Yeah, she had called. She didn't call me. She called my fiance. Uh -huh. Like, Yes. Um, my lawyer also have the, the actual cell phone records. Like, it was no call ever to me. I had, um, I gave up my, my location. I gave up all my phone records to... Uh, the court and everything. But you reported to... Yes, I, she told me to meet her. She said, meet, meet, meet her at the Wilson address. I met her. I met her at the Wilson address. I've never entered the house. They have video footage of that and everything. Why would you go... Why would she tell you to go to the Wilson address if she knew that you had a different address? What was this address you were living with? That uh, living with... The, the address the address I was living there was a night hall address is is forty okay so that that address does not appear anywhere in my record yes and you, so is, you, all right let me let me speak for a moment please um I'm reading from the narrative um Alicia Bruno called and asked about lifting the hold, told her it wasn't happening. We were the ones that made the arrest. She claimed subject moved from that residence about a year prior and only went to the address of record that morning because agent's son said to be home at that address. But if she knew that you were not living at that address, why would she tell you to go to that address? I think the, the DEA wanted access to that particular house and they use Mrs. Sun up to be able to access that house. That's that's also they also have like my lawyer have the footage and everything else of the DEA and, and them going in the house, turning the cameras down. I was never in the house. I I, I pulled up to the house. I called Mrs. Sun. I'm like, you told me to meet you here. I'm like, I have to pick my daughter up. I'm like, if you're not gonna, you know, come soon, do I have enough time to pick up and go grab a car? But she like, no, she said, I'm, I'm right around the corner. So I waited. I waited because I was asked to wait. And in the process of me waiting, she pulled up. Right before she pulled up, my sister asked me, she was like, um, I'm, I'm gonna back it up. She called Felicia. I'm asleep. Felicia woke me up. She's like, um, hey, your PO called. She's like, you know, can you can you need to contact her? So I'm like, all right, I call her. She said, meet me at the Wilson address. And even during the trial, the DEA and Mrs. Sun, she admitted that when they passed the house, my car wasn't there. That was the reason for her calling Felicia. And she didn't call me. Like my lawyer also have the, the records of that. Um, once I arrived, I waited a few minutes. 
you know, probably about three, four minutes. So what I did was I, I called Mrs. Son. I'm like, Mrs. Son, I'm here. I'm like, it's getting kind of late. I bring my daughter to school every morning. Do I have enough time to go grab her, get a coffee? I'm like, her school's around the corner. I can drop off. I'll be right back here. She's like, oh, well, no, I'm around the corner. She like, oh, wait. So as she said that, my sister came to the door. She was like, what you doing here? I'm like, hey, my PO told me to meet her at this address. She and was the like, last time you had been at that address. How often did you go to 4501 Wilson where your sister lived? I, I, had, I used to visit my sister at one time kind of regularly. I had stopped going like six months in advance. You know, that's around the time of the police report. I had I got into an accident and like my sister have cameras like all around the house and throughout the house. But the person I had the accident with was showing up there stalking. So I'm like, she, my sister, like, hey, that truck that you was in an accident with, you know, it, I saw that truck and she replayed the camera. So I'm like, yeah, that's the guy. So my daughter's school is like directly around the corner. So I'm picking her up. Like, I have this on video. I'm actually recording the person following me. So I'm like, my daughter's in the, in the car and he followed me a long, long way. So what I did was I had, I contacted him and said, I'm like, can you please meet me? I'm like, I really need to meet you. I'm like, I'm not trying to get in any type of trouble or nothing. I'm like, you know, I'm like, I've never given you problem. Like, this is like, this guy is following me. I'm like, and like, I'm in tears. Like, literally, I'm like, I'm, I'm not trying to get in trouble. She like, well, all right, well, just, well, just meet me here. So I met her like further up the street from the house. Like we met in an open lot. And she was like, I explained to her, I showed her. I'm like, hey, look, here's my phone. I'm like, I can get my sister to send the other thing to you. But this is the man right here following me. She like, well, oh my God. She like, um, what you need to do is is call the police and make a report. So she like, well, you still at um at Felicia's? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you know, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what this guy, you know, what's this, what he's trying to do. So she's like, well, just call the police and keep me informed and let me know what's going on. So I I I called the police, I made a report. They came, they came to the house, they came to to, to me and Felicia's resident. He took my statement. He was like, man, I've never saw that. Even my 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 attorney, my civil attorney, he even reached out. He was like, man, I've never saw nobody really stalk somebody after an accident. So I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I told him, like, I explained it to my PO. I'm like, what I'm going to do is I just have my sister to, like, grab my daughter since my niece goes to the school and just meet me like away. I'm like, I ain't trying to get in trouble. He knows my car. Like, you know, everybody know I, I drive the Genesis. So I'm I'm like, all right. So... I, I did that and I just stayed away. Okay, so your sister, you, you asked this question. I mean, this, it was obvious that there was guns and drugs in your sister's home. If you had been living there and the same activity was going on with drugs and guns, then I, you were a felon in the presence of guns and drugs. I've, I've, ma'am, I've, I've never... Me. I've never been in the present. Like some people moved. My sister had people that she rented to the, the the room to prior to me leaving. I was I was going there for a very extended period of time. Like I've never been involved in no type of criminal activity. I've I've never even had a tech. Like my other people been been in the house and and when I was staying there numerous of times. Like. Even during trial, Miss Sun said herself, like, hey, this guy's one of the most respectful people. She even told me, like, she came visit me and she was like, hey, um, I'm like, you know, this have nothing to do with me. I'm like, you know, my 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 sister's getting with the people. They're going to come down here. They're going to sign the affidavits and everything else. She was like, well, all right, just let me know and I, I'll help you out. And she well, doesn't see, work there no I more. See the letters. I see the letters of these people indicating that it was their pills and drugs they ever get arrested um i don't know i just know some Only people that was in one i know one of the guys in the room is i think he's well two of them went to jail i know another one i think he's deceased or something like i don't i don't really know know them like that well enough my sister probably can inform you more on it like all i could tell you is basically what, what happened with me ma'am i i honestly like you don't know these people these were not i really friends. No, I don't know. And one of the guys come to find out he was on one of the men that came that he was actually a parolee of his. Like I, you know, I was the only one. It was like seven or eight people. They pulled out the house. 
like they went in there. I'm the only one they brought to jail. And I'm asking them, I'm like, I'm asking her, I'm like, why? Like, why is this here? I'm like, I have no knowledge of nothing that's going on in there. She was like, because I'm on, I only could take you to jail because you're the one on parole, nobody else there. So I'm like, well, how is that even like possible not to arrest nobody they, else? Let me ask the question. When they went to the house and you were outside, did you ever enter the house with them? No, ma'am. Oh, inside the house while they were doing the search. I, I never answered. They the, the police asked someone in the house, which one was your bedroom? And they said, into the hall on the left. And well, that's I don't, information. That, that's okay. another question that came out at trial. They asked, I think they asked, it was my sister they asked, it was asked what room that he stayed in during the sure. time he was living there. She was like, well, he haven't lived here in a minute, but it was like, well, what room? She was like, the, the room is being rented to somebody, but he stayed in the back bedroom, I think, on the left. That's what I read. Yeah. Um, she... Were you ever um, represented while you were on this period of supervision? No, ma'am. I, I, I've, I've never had a tech. I've never failed the drug test. I don't use drugs. I don't drink. Like okay. I bring that up is because um, you you are a fourth felony offender. I mean, excuse me, um, a second class offender. So you um, have been on probation or parole before and completed it. I was on probation and parole. I, I was 16 years old. I had a charge and they even try to bring that charge that it was like, um, he's on parole for armed robbery. I was on parole at 16. I even have the ARPs that I, I wrote. They dated, signed, they in the Department of Correction. Like I've been finished with the charge and everything. So I'm not on paper for no type of violent crime or felony. I'm not on like for armed robbery or nothing. Right. Okay. So, Mr. Rao, um, at this time, I'm going to ask if my colleagues um, have any further questions. I, I got one quick question. I, I noticed that uh, you had some paperwork under the mattress. They said that, like, the, the cameras, my lawyer, and she have the video of it. They said they found a, a piece of paperwork in the the cameras. Like, I don't, like I say, I don't know why the DA wanted access to the house. They went in there and turned the cameras down. I haven't been there. It was a, and come to find out in trial, it was like a, a old paperwork dated, I think, and I want to say it was dated from something dealing with like in slide out. It was old. All right, point blank. Give us the truth, man. When's the last time you stayed at that house? The last time I stayed at that house, sir, it it been a long time. Like okay. it, it been over. Seen you at Before, I'm talking about due to due to August the eighth of twenty twenty two. I would have to say it it was like literally between thirteen months to ten months, if even that. Like I'm talking, I haven't been in that house, sir. I promise you that. Real quick, did you uh did the officer ever come see you at another house where you stayed after um, you left that residence? She had the address. I. Something happened with the office. She told me to flood it out. I don't. I don't really know, like I the. About it. And I was. It did flood a lot back then. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know what happened with it. So when I had explained to her with it, because I asked, I came to her and I was like, "Hey, you know, I'm staying." All she asked was for the address. She asked for my fiance full name. She asked. She even asked for the license plate at one time. She was talking to like numerous of my managers, bosses, and everything. Like I got what I needed. That's that's good. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And I and I am aware that you um had all stood before a jury and they found you not guilty. So I, you know, I am I, aware of the legal yeah. I had um it was just not the jury. I had like some of the charges was with the judge too, where I had like the judge. Right. Miss Talbot found not guilty. Um let's go ahead and, and hear from um who first, your mother or who's that? Yeah, sister, sister. Okay. Ms. Rao, Yolanda? Yes, I'm here. Good. Would you um what do you, would you like us to know? Um, I can clarify a little bit of the uh with the people staying in my house. I did rent out two rooms in my home um to people. Um he was not staying there. 
he had not been standard, like he said, because of the auto accident that he got into and his PO was aware. Um, I don't understand what's really going on. You know, his parole, he's been on parole for a long time. It was when he was young and, you know, has completely changed his life around. He held down a job and in the process of all of this happening, we were in talks of starting our LLC, getting a business going. So I just don't want him to be dinged for something that was going on in my space that he had nothing, you know, nothing to do with. You won't be tired. You know Yes. Oh, is there, wait, hold on. Uh, Mr. Rowell, is there a door open behind you or something? We get a lot of feedback. Oh, excuse me. Yes. I'm going to come a little bit. I'm going to bring you. it down a little bit, please. I'm, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, Miss Miss Bruno. Yes, you can hear me? Yes. Yes, hi. So yes, um, just to clarify everything that he stated, he has been living with me over a year. He he probably moved in of like April of um, 2021. We got engaged of December of 21. So yes, he was living with me up until the time of the arrest. It was very strange the morning of the arrest that his PO didn't even call him first. She actually called me. I never knew the number, so I, I just missed the call because it was like six o'clock in the morning. And then once I missed, missed the call, she actually texted me and I looked at the text. She said, um, hi, Felicia, this is P.O. Um, and son, I'm looking for James. So at that moment, I woke him up. I said, your P.O. is texting me looking for you. Why is she calling and texting me? He said he don't have a clue. So at that point, he did call her to see what she needed and what she wanted. And she asked him to meet her at that address. Um, I'm really confused today as the day of that happened, why he was arrested. We all confused what happened when he pulled up and they searched him and his car. They never found anything in his possession on his personal space. Like Ms. Yolanda said, um, the room that was found had other adults in it that day of the arrest. I think two of the guys that they found sleeping that morning was the guys who actually say the item was theirs. So, you know, I did call her that evening, his PO, to see what was going on and why he was arrested and why she, the hole was on. She said she couldn't take the hole off and he has to just go through the process. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not understanding why he's been arrested. It was nothing in his possession. So, yes, I feel like it's been 19 months he's been away from his family. He's been innocent. He's been proven innocence in the court system by the jury and a judge. And he's been away from his family, missing everything. Um, and he's a great father. He's a great stepfather to my kids. The kids ask when he's coming home every day. And it's just been a long nightmare roller coaster for him. And he's very innocent. So I really appreciate if you all would just um, find him not guilty because, like I said, none of this was his and he hasn't been living in over a year. I'm not sure why she didn't change the address. And I really don't know why she called me that morning, you know, looking for him. She never even called him. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Bruno. We appreciate your input. I don't see any other questions. So. Um, Mr. Rowell, is there anything you'd like to say to us before we uh, turn it over to Ms. Freebird? Well, like, I, I truly miss my kids, my fiance, and my family. Like, I pray by the grace of God that the boy find me not guilty. Like, I, I have no knowledge or involvement in any type of criminal activity. Like, I don't drink. I don't do drugs. Like, I really work and spend time with my family. Like, they are the people they pull. They had, like, three people staying in that room. Like they got camera footage of all this here. Like I okay. could see if, if I was guilty, like, yeah, like, but it's so much stuff going on. Like I'm 45, like, my, like my grandmother have had a stroke. Like my fiance just had two major surgeries. Like I have a son that just dropped out of college. He's dealing with depression about me being in here. My daughter's going through all kinds of stuff. I'm, I'm innocent. 
can you please take in consideration of what my family is telling y'all and what my lawyer is about to tell y'all? She have the the proof, the videos. Like I I wasn't doing nothing wrong. Mr. Garrick could tell you the 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 peel I had before this lady. Like I don't even know why she's going to the extent that she's gone. She working for the same people right now that came in the house. Like I Okay. I, Look, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and hear from Ms. Friedberg now, okay? Yes, yes, ma'am. All right, Ms. Friedberg. Yes. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, hearing from me. Um, I've known Mr. Rowell and his family uh, for the last uh, few years. Um, well, since he's been incarcerated, nineteen months. Um, he, you know, uh, just on a, a guess, more of a little bit of a personal note. Um, Mr. Rowell is a very kind and gentle person. He is a quality human and someone, you know, I've been in this business for 28 years, um, you know, watching, talking to Mr. Rowell about what was going on with him prior to this um, false arrest. Uh, he was doing really great. Um, he was holding down, I believe, about four jobs. He had a job with the city of New Orleans uh as a tower and hall monitor. He was working for a construction company, Cycle Construction. Uh, he was also starting this LLC with his sister uh, called Tasty Wagon LLC. Uh, and um, he's also a poet. He was performing poetry. Um, he is a gentle and kind man. With regard to the, the problems um, about his address, um, I would submit to you that this is more of a paperwork issue that his agent, Annie's son, knew very well that he had been staying with Felicia Bruno, that they were engaged. She had all of Miss Bruno's contact information and was very well aware, as Mr. Rowell has told you, that he was concerned that a guy he'd gotten into an accident with was, you know, knew his knew the 4501 address and was coming by the house and had told Miss son, look, I'm, I'm just going to be staying with Felicia. So, um, and by the way, I apologies for not having the trial transcript. Uh, it is, is difficult to get in, in this, this quickly. Um, and other cases are made priorities that are being gone up for direct appeal, which I'm sure, you know, but I just wanted to, to say that. Um, but uh, all of these things, uh, came out at trial. Um, and, and, so I guess, you know, the jury and the judge did find him not guilty. And I understand that, you know, innocence and not guilty aren't necessarily the same thing. Um, but I would I would submit to you that he is innocent. And uh, and I think uh, I think everyone uh, could see that, including the judge uh, and the jury. You know, the fact that he you know, it came out at trial that his car was clearly the the last one parked there, that it wasn't there when they first passed by. Um, they searched his car. They searched him. They did not find anything unlawful uh, on him. Um, and, you know, Miss Sun at trial, you know, did go on, did say what a respectful person that Mr. Rao was always to her and in very good communication. You know, this, it, it wasn't, you know, this attempt to abscond or to hide or to, to not be available for the, the parole people, he was. He was available within minutes. Um, and so, uh, you know, I guess, you know, I, I can go through um, how the evidence came out at trial, if you would like that. Um, and if if not, I can go ahead and and close. Um, yeah, we don't need the evidence. We'd like you to go ahead and close. Okay, all right. And you know, I just um, you know, I've I've actually never appeared at a parole hearing before, um, and so I'm I'm very uh, pleased to to be able to appear before you guys. Um, but you know, I have such um, I don't say this lightly, but I have such full confidence that Mr. Rowell. Uh, will continue to be uh, an amazing uh, parolee and a family man uh, to these amazing women that have, have stood by him uh, and to his 11-year-old daughter, who he was just kind of getting back in the groove uh, because of his home with Felicia. You know, she was spending almost every weekend with them, uh, and he was taking her to school almost every day. 
Um, and that uh, has been, um, you know, obviously halted and it's very emotional, you know, for this family. I'm, I'm just asking, you know, we think 19 months is, is sufficient and we please ask uh, that you place him back on full. Thank you. I'm prepared to vote. Um, Mr. Rowell, um, your charges, you were found not guilty by a jury. You've been down 19 months. You have, in my opinion, a stable uh, plan going forward in terms of um, housing and support system. Um, no other violations are before me. I think we've resolved those adequately. So my vote today is do not revoke. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, my vote today uh, is the same, Mr. Ryle. Uh, you've been down 19 months and you were found not guilty at trial. So uh, it, it uh, you know, and, and listening to you talk, I hope you, uh, I hope you're doing what you say because you talk. I'm ready. So I'm ready. I'm sorry. I'm not to revoke today. Okay, Mr. Rowell, and I do agree with my colleagues. My vote also today is do not revoke. So we're going to return you to supervision and wish you well. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for your participation today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, can you put it on? Okay, I'm actually proud to say that I I believe that I followed what happened in this hearing. And I have to admit, the first time I listened to it, I had no idea. So I listened in one second. I'm with my little one, and he wants to watch Paw Patrol. And we will have him watch Paw Patrol in a minute. I just want to say, this is what I think I figured out what happened in this hearing. Um, He, <sighs> listen to this. The, the police wanted to get into this apartment, his sister's apartment, because she was renting it out to people who, you know, had illegal weapons and narcotics. And, and to do it, because you, 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 they couldn't get a search warrant for whatever reason, they took a shortcut and said that he is staying there they asked his parole officer to go into the home to do the search because parole officers parolees don't have the right to refute a search they lose those rights and you don't need a search warrant so and this is what his even attorney said with a straight face and i don't know if you saw i i, I use the zoom in feature i'm playing around with these zoom features now and that's why i zoomed in on the parole board's faces they, they all looked at each other like what did they just accuse them of doing they accused the police of making a fault of of getting his parole officer to claim that he lived there even though they're claiming he did not so that they can go inside of that house without a search warrant and if that's true that's crazy i mean that is different level like corruption right but i kind of believe it it's so bizarre it's so ridiculous that i i think it could be true because who would make that up as an excuse and even his attorney was saying it with a straight face um it's believable though and the only thing they found that even they claimed, I think, belonged to him was an old document, piece of paper. And he won in court. He went to trial. He's one of the few. You know, we see it all the time where people are like, why did you plead guilty if you were innocent? And they always have different excuses. My attorney said I could plead to a misdemeanor. I didn't think, you know, it would take so much time. But here is a man who actually over a year went to a jury trial, was found innocent and um and i and i believe him and that's unfortunate that that uh there was a lot of corruption that could have gotten him locked up. i don't know exactly what he did we don't have the info his, his name's too common um to pull up information but this was also a case that we were able to see the new parole officer in action it was her it was her case what do you, how do you think she did jerry ledoux 
Um, so if you're curious about her, she was, her, she was on the board of paroles for five years. Um, we never saw her, but she was on the board for five years. And um, she took advantage of multiple association parole authority training events during tenure of the board. She earned her MS in communications, University of Louisiana Lafayette, where she wrote her qualitative thesis and stakeholder there, medical parole, Paw Patrol on a roll. Recently was served as a, a blah, 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 seven years of congressional liaison in the United States House of Representatives. I thought she did well. I, I, I'm enjoying her so far. She's kind of like soft spoken, but doesn't seem like a pushover, but it's still early. Anyways, tonight we did a very short hearing um, because we're going to jump over to Connecticut for about an hour and a half hearing. So um, I want to keep it short. If you haven't, more than half of you aren't subscribed to my second channel. It could be because there's confusion. I use the same logo. The names are similar. So maybe you haven't realized it yet, but we're going to, it's going to beam us up automatically there. You don't need to, um, to, to do anything. Uh, but if you're not watching this live, I'll put a link to it in the description. It's a very, that hits me. It's, he's looking at like, um, it's a, it is a very scary case. It's actually about a, a man. I say a man. He, he, he was one week before his 18th birthday when he committed this crime. And that's why he has a chance at commutation. He sexually assaulted and murdered his four-year-old cousin. So if you can imagine, yes, a, a man has a chance at freedom. It's a disturbing case. We're going to go hop in and see it now. With that, I'll let you go.